morning students uh, today we'll be seeing about uh, occlusion in computer which is one of the most important topic in uh, short notes long answers and most commonly asked question in viva so before going to uh, directly into the occlusion computer i just want to add few points on our few slides on general occlusion so i just want to make clear about occlusion concepts first so first is what is occlusion so occlusion it's per as per GDPH, glossary of processing terms, GPT. So it's nothing but a static relationship between incising and masticating surface of maxillary or mandibular teeth or tooth analog. So this definition you have to uh, memorize because most commonly asked by you as I already mentioned. So it is nothing but when you clench a teeth like this. So what is the relationship between maxilla and mandible? So that is called occlusion and a static position. So it's suffered again two types. One is a static relationship and dynamic relationship. So occlusion we can define. There are further terminologies we should know under occlusion, which is classified broadly under two categories. One is static relation, another is dynamic relation. So static relation, under static relation, we have three important concepts. One is maximum intercuspation. Second one is centric relation. Third one is centric occlusion. Under dynamic relation, that there are two concepts. One is uh, canine gated occlusion and mutually protected occlusion. So these things are seen in oral cavities. So static relation is nothing but when you clench the teeth and don't move. So that is uh, how what are the existing relation between maxilla and mandible are called static relation. And dynamic relation is when the mandible moves in forward direction or lateral direction. What are the relation between the maxillary mandible teeth? So what are the relation which we can expect between the maxillary mandible teeth? So those concepts comes under dynamic relation. So we'll just see one by one. So maximum intercuspation, as the name implies, so it is a relationship of a maxilla and mandible when the teeth are in maximum contact. So when you clench the teeth tightly like this, so what is the relationship which exists between the maxilla and mandible? So that is called a maximum intercuspation. Second thing is centric relation. So centric relation is nothing to do with the teeth actually. Centric relation mainly depends upon your TMJ, right? So centric relation mainly defines us. So this is the uh, formal definition of centric relation. So again, this definition we have to memorize. Maxillary mandible relationship in which the condyle articulates with the thinnest a vascular portion of the respective disc and so on. And this position is clinically discernible and is restricted purely rotatory movement in the transverse hinge axis. So main uh, concept is. So centric relation is nothing but it is a relationship between the condyle and the glenoid fossa or the articulate upper articulate surface. So whenever the patient is at a rest position or whenever the patient is doing functional movement, the condyle comes in or contacts the thinnest or mid portion of the articular disc. So that's by nature it is designed like that. So this condyle and the articular disc together comes in contact the anterior slope of your articular eminence. So this is a design in nature so that whenever the patient is functioning, this relationship maintained properly so that this relation, why it is maintained like this is because this relation transmits a force more favorably to the jaws and the surrounding structures. So this is called centric relation. So whenever you are fabricating processes, so we have to maintain this nature, which is existing patient smooth. So whenever you're recording jaw relation for a complete denture or whenever you're recording a full mouth rehabilitation for a patient, you have to find this, what is the centric relation for that particular patient and we should maintain that relationship whenever you're fabricating full mouth rehabilitation processes. So this is the importance of centric relation. Third one is centric relay occlusion. So this is a bit uh, a new concept to understand. So centric occlusion was what happens is when the condyle is in centric relation position, that is when the condyle has a rest position. And it, when it comes in contact with the anterior surface of the anterior, anterior slope of the glenoid fossa, and in, in that position, and you try to close the teeth slightly, what is the relationship between the teeth? So that is centric occlusion. So uh, in the natural dentition, what happens is when the condyle is in centric relation, you have to slightly close the teeth. And the relationship between the maxillary teeth and mandible teeth when the condyle is in centric relation is called centric occlusion. So this is the definition of that. The occlusion of opposing teeth when the mandible is in centric relation. 
this may or may not coincide with the maximum intercooler aircraft position. So this last line, what it implies is, in natural dentition, most of the cases, when you try to close, the, when you maintain the TMJ in centriculation position, and when you try to close the jaw, your teeth will not come in maximum intercuspid position. So your maximum interface will comes in contact in a slope and cosa. So that's what they're going to mention here. So this may or may not coincide with the maximum intercuspid position. Next concept on dynamic occlusion. Next, we are coming to dynamic occlusion, that is canine guided occlusion. So here, what we are supposed to do is, so when we clench the teeth and try to move the mandible for either left side or right side without opening the jaw. So we are just like that. So when I, in this case, I just removed my jaw on the right side, when you clench the teeth and when you move the mandible to the right side, for example, in this photo, the patient is moving on the right side. In this case, you are only your maxillary and mandible canine comes in contact. So the slope of the palatal slope of the maxillary canine guides the mandible on light lateral position. So this is called canine guided opposition, which exists in almost 60 to 70 percent of the population. The next concept is group function occlusion. In this case, the patient is performing the same movement. That is, patient is clenching the teeth and trying to move the mandible on the right side direction. So when he or she does like that, your teeth contact occurs in starting from canine premolar and mesobuccal cusp of first molar region. So when the entire teeth on the working side or working side means the jaw in direction in which the jaw is moved. So when the entire teeth on the working side comes in contact, so that is called group function occlusion. So this is also commonly seen in natural dentistry. Maybe 20 to 30 percent of the population has a group function occlusion. So these are all the concepts of occlusion which exist in natural dentition. So now we will see the difference between the natural dentition and artificial dentition. Artificial dentition here I mean is your complete denture. I am not talking about the uh, full mouth fixed partial denture. I am just meaning here, uh, I want to mention about your complete denture processes. In natural dentition, incising does not have any effect. So uh, uh, we have people have a natural dentition. So far, I can take myself an example. So my natural condition, if I try to chew anything with the apprentice, just like an apple or something. So I don't know, I don't, I will not see any much effect. But in case of a complete denture patient, when the patient tends to chew with the front teeth, automatically the leverage force comes into action and it will dislodge the posterior aspect of a denture. So denture it comes down, tends to come down. So that is the problem with your natural artificial condition. Second thing, balancing side contact. So I already mentioned that working side is the direction in which the jaw is moving. For example, when I move the jaw on the right side, so my right side is called working side and left side is the balancing side. So in group function voice, we already saw when I move the right side, the teeth on the right side comes in contact. That is normal. Your balance, the opposite side, there should not be any contact. So that is what how it exists in natural dentition. But in artificial complete denture processes, we need to have the contact of the teeth on balancing side, that is the teeth on the opposite side of the movement. So I'll just explain you why it is important in the further coming slides. Next is in natural dentition, teeth function as a single unit. So if you bite on the premolar, only that premolar force is transferred only to that particular premolar. It is not transferred to any other tooth. So each and individual tooth act as a single unit. In uh, complete dentition, what happens is it exists as a whole, it acts as a whole. So even if you bite on the more premolar gen, so the force transmitted is entire denture based. So the natural artificial dentition always acts as a whole. And again, the force is distributed in case of natural dentition through the periodontal ligament. And in case of artificial teeth, the force is distributed to the mucosa. <clears throat> Next, coming to the biting force, the natural dentition force, biting force is 600 Newton. And compared to that, in artificial complete denture process, it is only one six of that uh, natural dentition, that is 100 Newton. And occlusal interference, in case of natural dentition, if case of a small interference exists in natural dentition, it can be tolerated by the natural dentition. But in case of artificial teeth, even the small amount of uh, occlusal interference will lead to instability of the denture. So denture tends to fall when the patient speaks or when the patient chews with that uh, occlusal interference. So this is all the major difference between your natural dentition and the artificial dentition. So next we'll see about the balanced occlusion. So the concept which exists only in complete denture. So please remember 
this balanced circulation we do not have a natural dentition balanced circulation is only given to the patient with the complete dental processes so exam la why wala most commonly they ask does balanced circulation exist in natural dentition please say that balanced occlusion does not exist in natural dentition this concept is only applied to the complete denture occlusion what is balanced occlusion so i'll just take the example which i quoted previously in canine gateral occlusion so imagine this is a case of a complete denture processes and the patient tends to chew the teeth on the right side so what happens is the canine on the right side comes in contact with each other so because of this force there is a leverage force uh, uh, started here and the denture on the left side comes down so when you tend to push here so automatically denture falls down because of the leverage force right so to avoid this what happens is what we can do is this is what we can do so to avoid this whenever the teeth comes in contact on the right side we should maintain that the teeth should also comes in contact on the left side also this is called a balanced occlusion which has to be maintained in the complete denture processes because complete denture is not fixed to any uh, bone or it's not fixed to any tooth so because of that when a patient comes on contact with one side the opposite tends to come down because of leverage force to prevent this dislodgement of the denture we have to maintain contact on both sides simultaneously so this is called balanced occlusion and this is the definition for that so this is a bilateral simultaneous contact of the posterior occlusal contact with teeth in centric and eccentric relation so it should be a bilateral contact and should be simultaneous and anterior and posterior so concept exists in uh, should be applied for protrusive movement also so when i protrude the teeth and make the incisal contact like this my molar should come in contact so it prevents the dislodgement so i already mentioned the incising will cause dislodgement of the denture so to prevent that so posterior tooth should contact during incising process so the bilateral simultaneous anterior and posterior occlusal contact of teeth and centric and eccentric position so this is called the balanced occlusion and there are numerous factors which affect the balanced occlusion or which we uh, rather than saying affecting which influence the balanced occlusion one is condylar guidance second one is incisal guidance third one is occlusal plane fourth is compensating curve fifth is cuspal height so i'll just show uh, we'll be discuss about one by one so first i'll just go with the condylar guidance so here as i mentioned already your tmj composed of your condyle and upper articular surface in between you have articular disc so upper articular surface is not a straight one it's almost a curved a s shaped curve in the superior inferior direction so whenever you tend to push the mandible out or whenever you protrude the mandible forward direction your condyle is directed downward because of the angulation of your articular eminence so this is called condylar guidance so the direction or shape of the condyle i mean articular eminence guides the mandible to protrusive movement so because of this movement whenever you tend to push the mandible forward your condyle is pushed down and the posterior separation increases so when the condyle goes down the gap between the maxillary posterior and mandibular posterior increases so which is not acceptable in complete denture so the condylar guidance definition is the mandibular guidance generated by the condyle and the articular disc traversing the contour of the glenar fossa and you cannot change this condylar guidance you can only record this condylar guidance of the patient that's the second point third one it causes downward displacement of posterior teeth during protrusion or lateral movement because of slope of the articulation surface your teeth goes down there is a separation between the posterior maxillary and mandibular teeth so which is not acceptable in case of complete denture because again when the separation between the posterior teeth increases that denture falls down immediately so you have to reduce this posterior separation as far as possible but unfortunately we cannot change the condylar guidance we can only compensate with some other factor so increasing condylar guidance increases the posterior separation that we have to be recorded from the patient's mouth next is incisal guidance again see in this post photo whenever uh, the patient is clenching here imagine the maxillary anterior teeth and this maxillary post uh, mandible anterior so whenever the patient is protruding the mandible is put to push downward because of the slope of the maxillary teeth so if the maxillary teeth is protruded like this so the downward movement is very less if the maxillary post anterior is like this the down movement is steep so to be explaining the further concept so it is nothing but the influence of contacting surface of maxillary and mandibular teeth on mandible movement 
So whenever the patient tends to move the mandibular jaw forward, the inclination of maxillary anterior teeth push the mandible downward. So this again increases separation of maxillary and mandibular teeth, which is not acceptable. Here both incisal guidance and the condylar guidance will tend to increase the posterior separation or teeth separation, which is detrimental for the stability of completeness. So our aim is to reduce this separation. Unfortunately, as I already mentioned, you cannot change the condylar guidance, but in complete anterior teeth setting, we can adjust the incisal guidance by reducing the overjet, so increasing the overjet and reducing the overbite. So if you do that, what happens is if imagine this is the steep, this is like this and mandible tends to pour like this. So if you want to reduce this amount of down separation, you have to increase the overjet and reduce the overbite. So mandible can move freely in horizontal direction without any separation. So by increasing the over jet and decreasing the overbite, we can reduce the incisal guidance and prevent the separation of the teeth. The third concept is occlusive plane. So it's nothing but as the photo images explain, it is the average plane created by the incisal and occlusal surface of teeth. So steeper the occlusal plane, more the separation. So what happens is whenever the condylar guidance is more, we have to do is we have to increase the occlusal plane to compensate the separation. So if you increase the uh, uh, so if you have to increase steeper the occlusal plane, more the separation happens. Next is the occlusal curve. So occlusal curve in definition is occlusal surface of lie when they viewed in frontal and sagittal planes. So there are two types of occlusal curves. One is the curve of P and curve of Wilson. So we have something called as compensating curve. Again, the definition most commonly as in the viva of uh, finally viva. The arc introduced in the construction of competence of removal and uh, the processes to compensate for the opening influence produced by the condylar and incisal cadence during lateral protrusive mandibular exclusive movement. So what happens is there are two types of occlusal curve. One is anteroposterior curve and the medial lateral curve. So I'll just explain with the photo. It will be easy to understand. So this is the curve of speed. So as I already mentioned, the compensatory curve of two types, one is anteroposterior curve, another one is medial lateral curve. So anteroposterior curve is otherwise called as curve of speed. That is when you see the jaw from the lateral aspect, your teeth are not aligned in a straight line. So rather than the teeth are aligned curve, which starts from the incisal cusp tip of the canine, following the buccal cusp of premolar, molar, and continuing to the ramus of the mandible, ending in the condyl of the mandible. So this curve, anteroposterior curve is called curve of P. And second curve is called curve of Wilson. So this is a medial lateral curve. So what happens is it is a medial lateral curve which starts from the right side or, or it starts from one side of the arch and continues on the anteroposterior the medial lateral direction up ends in the opposite side. So this is a curve which starts from buccal cusp of one side, travels to the palatal cusp and ends in the buccal cusp of opposite side. And in maxilla, it is curved down, curved, uh, it is convex, and in mandible, it is concave. So this is called curve of Wilson. So why this curve is important is, whenever the condyl guidance is more, as already mentioned, when the condylar guidance is more, the amount of separation will be more. So in that case, to reduce the amount of separation, we have to increase these compensatory curves to so as well the denture comes in contact even though if you protrude the mandible forward or lateral. So these compensating curves are used to reduce the amount of separation if you increase the compensating curve so that it maintains the stability of the denture. Next, the last one is cuspal height. So cuspal is nothing but it is the height of the cusp from the occlusal plane. So how much height the occlusal plane from the occlusal aspect the cusp is protruding. So that is called cuspal height. Again, greater the cuspal height, lesser the separation. So cuspal height is increased in case of increased condylar guidance. So my, our entire concept revolves around the reducing the amount of separation when the patient moves the mandible on the right side or in the protrusive direction. So that uh, this is called a Thielman's formula where the condylar guidance and incisal guidance is an occlusive plane or acting to increase the separation and it is compensated by 
compensating curve and the cusple height. So we have to use this formula to stabilize the uh, maxillary mandible completion and reduce the amount of separation. So this is a cusple inclination. Again, this is one more concept which can be used to increase the buckle view of molars. Thank you.